In our trading today at Conquest, we lose probably on 65% of our trade, and we won only on 35% of our trade. Because we make a lot more on the trades that are profitable than we lose on the trades that are not. When you let your emotions get into it, you get over-invested in, in being right. I was the global head of exotic FX derivatives at UBS until I think around 97. Um, and in 97, in a scene, sorry, 98, um, in a scene somewhat reminiscent of we went through last year with Credit Suisse, uh, back then, actually, it was UBS that was in the hot seat and needed to be rescued. Uh, and it was Swiss Bank Corporation to the rescue. In 98, I think it was, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, there was a shotgun wedding of essentially Swiss Bank taking over UBS. I mean, they called it a merger, but really it was Swiss Bank taking over UBS. When that happened, uh, I was one of the very few senior managers from the UBS side who was not just asked to stay, uh, but I was asked to stay and was promoted to run the combined banks, proprietary trading groups in Europe and the Americas. So essentially trading the bank's capital in Europe and the Americas. I did that until the beginning of 1999, when frankly, I was fed up with banking and sort of, you know, the, the structure and everything. And I decided to leave and start my own hedge fund. Um, at the time I was living in London, I left London at the beginning of 1999, moved back to New York, rented a one-room office on Park Avenue, um, took $3 million of my own money, um, and just started to fund and started trading. That was kind of the beginning of my hedge fund. Most of my errors um, that I learned early in the early part of my career is what led me today to be 100% quantitative trader. So from day one, when I started trading, I thought I was very disciplined and I had a very rigorous approach to, to trading. But back when I was in the hedge fund in 93 or when I was at TBS in, in you know, between 2004 and 2009, I was mostly doing discretionary trading and relying on my quant skills, but not being driven by my quant programs and so on. Uh, and I'll give you a very simple example. So, you know, I, I follow, let's say at UBS, I follow all my quantitative algorithmic analysis and decide that dollar yen is cheap and I should buy it. And part of that decision process, okay, I'm going to buy dollar yen. And let's say the price is at 120. I expect it to go to 130. And if it goes to 118, then I think I'm wrong and I'll stop out of the position. And this unfortunately happened way, way too many times before I, I learned my lesson. If a trade starts working good, well right away, then no problem, those are the easy ones. But let's say you put on the trade and then you buy it at 120, it goes up to 122, you think you're really hot, and then it drops to 119. And then maybe it goes back to 120 and you're looking at it and you're watching it. And then, it goes to 119, 118 and a half, 118 trades. And that 118 is the level that when you initiated the trade, you said, if it goes there, then I am wrong on this, on this trade and I need to get out. But then you look at, especially if you're sitting at a, uh, at a large bank trading desk, and it's like, well, you start rationalizing why it went there and why you are right. Say, well, you know, it really went there because, you know, Soros had a big sale order and came and it, and it really drove the market down more than it should. And I think it's going to come back. So, you know what? I'm going to lower, I'm going to move my initial stop from 118 to 117 and a half. And then it goes to 117 and a half and we're like, well, you know, it, 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 it went to 117 and a half, but it's trading kind of bid. I think. I think it wants to rally from here. Let me move myself to 116. And before you know it, you start taking many more losses on a trade where if you were disciplined and stuck to, because look, in our trading today at Conquest, we lose probably on 65% of our trade and we won only on 35% of our trade. The reason we make money and we make good money is because of risk management. 
because we make a lot more on the trades that are profitable than we lose on the trades that are not. If I owe all that success to being quantitative, because I don't have to make the decision to stop out of a trade and start rationalizing whether Soros sold a little, you know, a little too much that caused it to go there. If it goes there, the computer is going to stop it out. When you let your emotions get into it, you get over-invested in, in being right. And you start rationalizing why you should allow the, the losses to accumulate more before you stop out. And before you know it, a trade that had the risk-reward ratio of three to one suddenly goes to 50-50, suddenly goes to three to one on the other side. So now, you know, you're, you're, you know, you bought at 120, it's trading at 116, and you're praying that it gets back to 120 so you can get out at flat instead of, you know, having stopped it. So, you know, discipline is extremely important. And in my experience, one of the best ways of getting the right discipline is to basically outsource it to a computer. It really depends sort of on your seat, right? Are you an individual investor trying to just, you know, use your 401k money to invest or are you a fund, somebody who wants to become a fund manager? If you're looking to invest your 401k, go into index funds and forget about it. <laughs> Don't worry, you know, actively manage. Uh, well, first of all, I would say 90% of individual investors in the stock market lose money over time. So don't buy and sell stocks. And majority of mutual funds underperform the simple index funds. So just put your money in index funds and spend your time, you know, an effort on things, your job, things that actually allow you to make money so you have more to invest. If you want to become a fund manager, then the most important question you have to answer first is what is, what is your strategy and what is your edge? There are tens of thousands of fund managers out there. What are you adding to that equation? There are trillions of dollars to be invested, but you need to have something new, something better, in order to steal that money from other fund managers and bring it to yourself. So what is it that is going to be so different and unique about what you do? Don't appreciate the risk of failure that is caused by bad business decisions, not just bad investment decisions. So if you are a good investor with a good strategy, make sure you have that right complement on the business side to make sure that you are compliant to make sure that you know you have you are registered with all the authorities that you be registered with you're doing you know you're you're creating the funds the right way you're you know you're doing all the filings that you need to do and so on but let's concentrate more on on the trading strategy you know first you have to understand what asset class you're in. Are you going to be in stocks? Are you going to be in bonds? Are you going to be in commodities? Are you going to be in all of them? Why do you think your strategy works? Um, if you're able to put your strategy into a coherent algorithm, I would strongly encourage you to program it and go back and backtest it and see how it did over time. I've seen in my life thousands of backtests of strategies where every single one of them looked unbelievably good. 99.99% of them never performed anywhere close to advertised. It's because of something called uh, selection bias, meaning as you are building trading models, you will over-optimize them in a way that never loses money in the past. However, the more you optimize a strategy, uh, the less degrees of freedom you are giving it. You are basically narrowing the path of the strategy where the only way it can make money is if it recreated a very exact path from the past, which the probability of that happening is almost zero. That's why they all kind of fail. So whenever you're building, especially a quantitative strategy, make sure your models have enough degrees of freedom, meaning, and to get a little bit into the weeds here, every quant model has parameters in it. For any parameter that you're using in your model, make sure that that parameter can go 40% up or down, and the degradation in your return is nowhere close to that move in the parameter, because otherwise it's overfitted and over-optimized. Make sure your business side is covered, because 
you know, no one wants to blow up their business or lose money in, 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 in the way that is not their core business. I can understand as a fund manager if I'm wrong in my strategy and, and my business blows up because I'm a bad manager, but it would kill me if I'm a good manager, but I blew up because of I wasn't registered or didn't do like the right sort of you know, business decision. So make sure either if you can do it or make sure you have somebody who can take care of that for you. And then when it comes to the trading, I would say the most important quality of a good fund manager is discipline. You have to be extremely well disciplined. And I think if you are quantitatively inclined, go more quant, go as quant as you can because that helps you a lot with your discipline. Math to me is a language. You know, I think everybody should maybe not have a degree in math now, but take as much math as, as they can. The most important thing you learn from studying math is how to learn, how to think about a problem, how to break a problem into its components, how to, you know, so uh, this is why I think of, of, of math almost as being a language. You have to be able to speak math to do anything. You will need quantitative skills to be able to program your models and backtest them and do all of that. So you need to, you know, you need to learn how to program. You need, uh, you know, uh, these kind of skills. I always look for somebody who has the natural curiosity about the market. I look for the people who, you know, when they were in high school or in college, were part of the investment club and where even if they don't have their own money, were trying to build trading models or doing things on their own. I've never seen a very successful person not be very passionate about what they do. So to me, the, the real sort of secret of success is to find what you're passionate about. You're never going to be really good at anything if you're watching the clock from nine to five just for quitting time. And it doesn't matter what you're passionate about, you will find ways of becoming extremely successful. You can be very passionate about like, you know, garbage and come up with a new way of, of breaking down garbage or collecting or doing something and, and, and have a huge career in it. Only go into this business if you really have a passion for investments and a thirst of knowledge of how you can beat the market, how you can beat the next guy, how you can do this, not because you think you're gonna make money in it or, or you think it's lucrative or whatever. At some point, if you're not that mathematical, then really you shouldn't be a quad. It's sort of a necessary but not sufficient condition to be a good fund manager. And there are plenty of extremely successful uh, investors who are not quant. I don't think anybody should aspire to be a quant if they don't have a very strong quantitative background. But let me reiterate, having a very strong quantitative background is a, is a necessary but not sufficient condition. It has to be complemented with a real deep thirst. I would say it's, it's a competitive sort of juices of wanting to beat the market wanting to beat the other guys trading the market. You really have to have that drive in you to keep you up at all hours of night thinking of ways you can, you know, tweak your model or come up with a new one or, or, you know, how to split, you know, this idea and that idea. If you don't have that drive, then you shouldn't really be doing it.